Morning folks, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School and I'm back out here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. I was actually over in the Pathfinder Outdoor Kitchen just kind of taking a break. It's the heat of the day. I was doing a little bit of hunting this morning. I had loaded a squirrel hunting video yesterday as a short on YouTube on my channel. And I wanted to kind of back that up today with a little bit about hunting kit. And I've done lots of videos in the past in the 21st Century Long Hunter series, things like that, about traditional style hunting kits. What would you take if you were going hunting for a couple of days? If you're only going hunting for a day, but you wanted to plan for just in case, because that's always a good thing to do. If I'm going on a real short scout or real short hunt, and I'm gonna be close to the property lines of my property or on my property hunting, then I generally carry less. But if I'm going to go beyond those boundaries hunting, or I think I may want to spend the night, then I'm gonna carry extra things with me. It's not a plan necessarily to spend the night, but I'm gonna have what I need. And that's kind of how I build my emergency type kits anyway. So the way I've set this up is in a GORUCK 26 liter pack, and you can put everything in there you need to hunt and to camp if you need to for the night in a pack like this and have plenty of conveniences. It's not gonna be the lightest thing on the planet the way I pack, probably looking at about a 25 pound pack ish and then i carry a pathfinder canteen and cup set in a molly container here with a strap on i've done a video on this before as well we'll talk a little bit about that because i have a secondary molly pouch in my pack that contains further cooking kit items where i decide to stay out there for the night and what i would probably carry if i was going to spend the night out there i would just change a couple things out within the pack from emergency gear to, hey, I'm planning to camp gear, like a nice hammock and possibly a stuffed underquilt of some sort, things like that. So let's talk about that. First, understand that I have a belt knife. This is the Pathfinder Knife Shop Camp and Trail. It's got a camo micarta handle on it. I have my Remington 870, modern firearm, not a single shot. I going to do some work with Remington this year. It's going to require me to carry this gun more often than I normally would because I would normally have a single shot. But I want to try out this pump shotgun for a while this year and see how it works out. So if you see me with that a lot, it's not that I'm losing my way or lost my tradition or lost my roots of traditional single shot, old time shotguns. That's not it at all. I just want to do some more modern stuff this year and Remington offered to help me out with that. So you're going to see more Remington firearms in my videos. Now, Again, I've always preached Go Ruck for a long time now. I've talked about Go Ruck packs. This is a 26 liter Go Ruck pack. It's got everything I would need in it, like I said, for the hunt, for making a lunch on the trail if I need to, making a more elaborate lunch if I chose to, or camping overnight if I needed to, plus emergency and some maintenance items. So let's go through this a little bit and we'll talk about each individual item inside. All right, so quickly we'll discuss this canteen pouch because it goes with something else in the backpack. So what have I got in this canteen pouch? Well, first of all, obviously I have the canteen. I have a spoon tucked into the back. I the canteen cup that I have inside this thing, the shield bugs are everywhere now. The canteen cup I have in here is a prototype cup that we are working on right now. Actually, they are being made that has the heavy duty gauge bat wing handles on it that the rest of our stainless steel has that fits this, okay? Now, I'm not a fan of only having this, although I do see the advantages of this over the L bracket. For cooking, I want the L bracket. For coffee drinking, this is nice. Having both is even nicer, all right? So we'll talk about that as well. Inside the pouches are a couple different water di disinfection devices, Aquamira tabs, 2% tincture of iodine, and always a spare lighter, brand new in there, okay? And this canteen set fits very well in the Molly style military pouch. You can buy a surplus one or an aftermarket one. They both work fine, not a problem. And you can tuck a spoon right in the back back there. If you can find a two quart canteen strap, that's all this is, on a set of D-rings that have been tucked into the Molly. I did a whole video on this that you can look at and see that. So I just want you to remember that this canteen set is here, what's in it because I have another partial canteen set in the back. Now, okay, so let's get to the meat and potatoes of things here, all right? All right, so opening this pack up, there's nothing in this front pocket. If I needed something on the fly or I was working with something in the bag, I may stick it in there. 
but there's nothing in this front pouch at all right now. So we'll open up this main compartment because it is a suitcase style pack. I do like the fact that it has handles all the way around for working out, but also makes it very convenient to just grab it and go if you have to move out quickly from an area without just slinging the pack on. You can just grab it by the handle and go. Got one on each side, one on the top, one on the bottom. No matter where you grab it, you're gonna get a handle. I like that. Now, we'll open this thing up and we'll talk about the top of this pack first. Most of what I have in here has to do with hunting because this is the easiest access on the pack when I'm sitting by a tree or if I'm sitting you know, in a blind or something like that. And my blinds would always be a makeshift blind. I don't actually use hunting blinds. So I would be a ground blind of some sort. Now, top pocket, very simple. I have a buff in here that has a set of Nikon binoculars inside it, all right? I like to have a set of optics with me, even though most of your shots are not very far. I like to have a set of optics anyway to see what I'm looking at sometimes in a distance. I've got a squirrel call in here. I would change that out for some other type of game call if I were hunting that type of game. This is a Quaker boy. This is the one that was in the video yesterday called the Squirrel's In. That's all that's in this top pocket. So just a pair of optics, just a game call. That's all that's in there right now. In this pocket, the zippered pocket, there is a folding diamond sharpener to hone my knife if I need to. There's a dump pouch in here for collecting off the landscape or putting game in. One roll of duct tape and a bag that contains cordage, tent stakes, more cordage. Basically, this is my cordage bag. So I keep everything that I would need to build shelters and do things off the landscape in this bag as far as cordage goes. And it's stuffed in here just like that. With this on one side, I just leave the sharpener toward the top so I can get to it. And the duct tape as well in case I need to get to that for repair or first aid. Simple, simple. Now, let's move on to the main pocket here. I've got this thing kind of stacked in here in the way I would need to get to it per se. I have ammo right here at the very top. When you open it up, you get to the hunting flap, you've got ammo exposed. I've got 12, 12 gauge shells in here, plus whatever's in the shotgun. I also have a bleed kit right in the front where I can get to it. And in my pocket always is a rat tourniquet on one side of my pocket. This has got an Israeli bandage, some bleed stop stuff, and pretty much that's it, okay? This is basically a stop bleed kit. There's not a whole lot to it, actually, but it is all-inclusive. It also has a couple military triangle-style bandages in it as well. Again, those two things are right in the front. The other thing that's right here in the front is a small Dyneema pouch that contains two things. It contains my headlamp bag. It's got the Pathfinder headlamp in it. And what I've done with this Pathfinder headlamp is the way this thing works, if you've seen it before, is it comes with a strap but it also comes with a Velcro attachment that you can attach to your hat. What I've done is I've just put shock cord on this thing with a slide lock on it so I can just throw this thing on my head and it remains fairly ultra light when I'm using it, okay? So I've got an ultra light type kit too that I carry quite a bit and this is part of that kit and so I've gone ultra light with that headlamp because of that. Now, the other thing that's inside this pouch, and you say, well, you added a whole bunch of weight to that by not having the batteries, is a brick. However, most of us would carry bricks anyway to charge our phone. So there's a cable for that in here. There's a multi-cable in here. It will charge my phone or my brick. And then the headlamp pouch sits on the top of that. And that's one convenient small pouch right there in the top of my kit in case I need to get to my headlamp. On the side of that, there's a ditty bag. This ditty bag has got all my smalls in it, okay? It's got a wash rag, toothpaste, toothbrush, spare lighter, some tenacious tape, some Advil, a notebook, a pen, a ferro rod. All of those things are inside this ditty bag. So everything from fire starting to repair to peripheral type first aid that's not really direct bleed stop is in this ditty bag, and it doesn't weigh a whole lot. And it doesn't take up a lot of room right here on the side. Now. I do have a saw in here, just a silky saw. 
for clearing brush, cutting poles for shelters, cutting shooting lanes, that type of stuff. Now we get to kind of the shelter system of this thing, okay? And this is important to understand because anybody who tells you this is my kit and they don't have three things in that kit for their shelter is full of it, all right? You need something to sleep on, something to sleep in, and something to sleep under, all right? So we have a snug pack trucker's mat in here. You say, well, that's a blow up mat. You're going to kill that thing. No. I have a 96 inch by four foot piece of tie back in here. This is my ground sheet. Weighs absolutely nothing. I have a swagman roll. And in this kit, which is another molly bag for a canteen cup, I have two things. I have a poncho, which becomes part of my shelter kit. And then I also have the rest of my canteen set as far as the other style. This has got the L bracket handle on it that locks. It's got the new flip up D rings on it to make it a longer reach to get into the fire to make it like a pot. It also has the stove and in the bottom I have the lid. So I have an all inclusive cook system. When I combine this with the other part of this canteen set, that's in the other pouch. And this stores again conveniently in this Molly pouch. And because I don't have a canteen in here, I have room to put this poncho stuffed inside the cup and it will allow this flap over the top to shut completely, giving me a small cook shelter style kit in one pouch that sits off to the side. Couple things in the very back, no big deal. I have a cooking rack. This is the Pathfinder branded cooking rack in the case. I just slide it in the back, it's out of my way. And then in the very back pouch, I have a simple navigation bag that includes only four items, a map, a compass, a protractor, and a pencil. That's all I need for down and dirty navigation. Generally speaking, I don't need this. I know this 4,000 acre property well enough out here that if I get off my property into the wildlife area, I don't need a map. However, because this is a an example style kit, I would have this in here if I were hunting an unknown area or location I wasn't familiar with. So I've got that tucked in the very back of this in the weight compartment of this Go Ruck pack. That's pretty much it. It's a simplistic kit. So the tie back goes to the bottom and then the Swagman roll. I put the air mattress here, and then I tuck things on both sides. So I've got the cook kit here. I slide this over to one side. I put the ditty bag here. The bag for the headlight here. Bleed kit goes in the very top. Ammunition in front of that. Silky saw right here. Close the flap over, and we're ready to go. Okay guys, listen, I appreciate you joining me out here today for just a quick video on this kit. It's an all-inclusive kit. It's no problem to be able to spend one, two, even three nights out there with this kit, especially if you have food. There's a little bit of room left in this pack where you could throw a couple just add water meals in the front pouch if that's what you chose to do to make sure you had food in case you couldn't get any food off the landscape. But as far as an overnighter in an emergency situation, piece of cake with this kit and it doesn't weigh a ton all the bases are covered, and I'll encourage you to make sure that if you're going to build a kit for hunting this season, and you're going into familiar or unfamiliar territory, unless you are 20 or 30 steps away from your car is where your tree stand is, you take the proper gear with you to make sure that in an emergency, you have the bases covered. Make sure that you have adequate shelter that covers in, on, and under. Make sure you have an adequate bleed kit, something like a tourniquet. All of those things are even more important when you're hunting because then you have the dangers of, you know you're gonna have your knife out to process game. You're gonna have a firearm or possibly some type of a bow and all those things can cause further injury by accident. So you need to make sure that you have your bases covered with first aid even better in those scenarios. I appreciate your views, I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. And I'll be back with another video, guys, as soon as I can, thanks.